Hi, Eastgate enthusiasts. So this video, it's not really about electric skateboards. It's more about uh, business, finance, running a startup company. So if you're not interested in that stuff, don't watch the rest of this. It's gonna be really quite boring. Uh, the reason I'm making this video is uh, recently uh, I made some comments on Reddit that were particularly unpopular with a lot of people. Let's just say a lot of people didn't understand my point of view and were particularly unhappy about it. So I wanted to make this video and I wanted to try to explain a little bit more details about why I believe certain things should be done certain ways. So bear with me and I'll try to make it as simple and as quick as possible. Let's get into it and I'll explain what all this fuss is about. So basically, in a nutshell, here's what happened. I basically told people not to order a Raptor 2. I know that's crazy, right? It's counterintuitive. But I pretty much said, don't buy from us. Don't do a pre-order for the Raptor 2 unless you committed to take delivery of it. And, and another way of saying that is don't order if you're gonna cancel. Um, we have a 20% cancellation fee, which is pretty high, right? It's a lot of money to lose just because uh, you wanna change your, your mind or you don't wanna order. And that's the point. We don't want anyone to order from us unless they can afford to do it or, or they're committed to do it. Um, and, you know, don't get me wrong, we want to sell as many products as we can, but it has to be viable, it has to be sustainable, and it has to be something that works within our, our ethos of our business. I mean, we don't want people to buy something if they're not fully committed to doing it. I mean, it, it's... Uh, the thing is with electric skateboards, there's there's a lot of hype at the moment. The industry's pretty young and it's growing, but there's, there's excitement. People want to get involved in the latest technology and people want to have the best boards. And, you know, there's a lot of um, peer pressure, maybe you could call it, but um, trying to get in on the latest deals and get the best prices and stuff like that sometimes makes people make the wrong decision and we don't want you guys to buy from us unless you are certain that that's what you want to do now look things change right things bad things can happen um and it can happen to anyone and people need to sometimes find ways to get money back that they committed to things that's fine. All I'm saying is that read our terms and conditions. We have a 20% cancellation fee. Um, so if you order and then change your mind before you've received it, we do deduct 20%. So that's, that's our uh, terms of trade. That's our, our deal with you. Um, now, the, other, the flip side of this is we do have incentives. So we do actually offer people a discount as well because we are pre-selling. The Raptor 2 electric skateboard, it's not available. It, it says that on our website that it's a pre-order and that shipping will occur later. Um, and we, we have delayed it, 100% certain we have delayed it. And it's not great, but that's how things are sometimes. And we just want our customers or potential customers to know where we stand, what our policies are. We're not trying to trick anyone. This is not a money grabbing exercise. Let me explain in a little bit more detail why we have a cancellation fee. So there are three main reasons. One, it's a disincentive. It's a financial disincentive. Fees and things like that in all kinds of industries are there as a disincentive. It's not dissimilar to, 
you know, the carbon tax. In our country, we have a carbon tax where the government charges businesses um, an extra tax for pollution. So it's, it's a disincentive. Our 20% cancellation fee is a disincentive. We don't actually want everyone flooding in and buying the Raptor 2 no matter what. We want people who have made calculated, smart, uh, rational purchasing decisions because if we have too many refunds or if we have too many people backing out of, of the sale contract, it's very um, difficult for our cash flow, it's difficult for our forecasting, it's difficult for our production schedules. Uh, we have to make a lot of guesses. Uh, in a startup business, you have to guess a lot about how many parts you might need or how much cash you might have. Um, and we base a lot of decisions, sometimes many months ahead, based on um, our, our track record or our historical sales data. So we, we basically need our data to be accurate and refunds people canceling really does disrupt that and, and makes it difficult to make accurate decisions and that impacts everyone. So reason one, it's a disincentive. We don't actually want everyone ordering the Raptor 2. You know, we're in a startup phase. We are pretty much marketing towards early adopters and e-skate enthusiasts with disposable income. So that's the truth of it. I'm sorry if that offends people, but that is, that is the honest truth. We have to focus on certain groups in the industry, in the market that are compatible with us at this point. Now, in saying that, when we have the product in stock, and it's on the shelf and it's just ready to go, we'll probably remove the cancellation fee completely because there's no real need to have it. We've, at that point, we will have been um, well established and our cash flows are probably gonna be quite good. Number two, our cancellation policy, it's actually an insurance policy for our loyal paying customers. People who have handed over their hard-earned cash can rest assured that the other people, the other people who have also handed over cash, are probably gonna stick around and, and see this deal through. They're going to take delivery of the product because otherwise they lose money. The, you know, the cancellation fee helps group our customers together and, and makes them committed and that's an insurance policy. That means we can be confident and move forward and pay for parts and build products and ship them to our customers and it's good for everyone. So our cancellation uh, policy of 20%, it's a disincentive to prevent certain people coming on board and, and handing over their hard-earned cash, but it's also an insurance policy so that everyone who does make that step knows that everyone has an incentive to stay committed. Number three is confidence. As a startup business, having a cancellation policy, which is essentially an incentive and a disincentive, like I mentioned, number one and two, um, that gives us confidence as a startup business. It allows us to forecast. It allows us to know that we can spend money, our investors' money, and that, that it's not gonna be taken away from us because we are running this business on cash, not debt. What that means is we don't have outside financial institutions who are backing us, who are funding this. This is crowdfunding. We're using our loyal paying customers' money. Thank you very much, we do appreciate it. We're using that money and we're buying in bulk so we can make mass produce a product and get it to you guys. And the reason we're doing this is because we couldn't do it on a smaller scale. It was impractical. Um, it, I mean, it, it doesn't make sense to do it that way. So we had to raise money and the, the best way to do it, we believe the best way to do it is from 
early adopters who are okay with, with our terms and conditions. That's, that's basically in a nutshell. So they're the three reasons we have this, guys. I hope it makes sense. If I've offended anyone by, by this business ethos or this, this business structure, um, I apologize. But it's for the, it's for the betterment of, of our business. It ensures we'll be around for a long time and it's to protect consumers as well. One of the biggest problems at the moment, and this is, if you're on social media, this is one thing that really gets, it, it annoys me, but it's really bad for the industry as well. And it always is, is something that blows up. And that's when startups or, or pre-orders or Kickstarter campaigns, it's when people don't deliver on promises. Financially at the moment in a great position, we have around 650 pre-orders for the Raptor 2. We've paid fully in cash for the first 500 units. With, you know, that's all said and done, it's all happening. Um, our cash flow is, is pretty, pretty good. Um, our sell through rates are pretty good, but we also have to plan for the future as well. You know, every time we make 500 units, we need about half a million dollars um, in cash. So we, yeah, we, we've got to be careful. We've got to make sure we're um, transacting ethically with the right people. And that's what all this is about guys. But yeah, it's, it's, really important for me and I really strongly believe that um, businesses need to be ethical, they need to have sound um, trading terms that are, that are protecting their investors. Um, so if you guys don't agree with this stuff, that's fine, you've got your right to have an opinion but we're not gonna change our policies just yet until we've got stock and then we can just ship stuff straight out. So. Um, I hope that makes sense. I hope you guys understand where we're coming from. Um, a lot of people have said I'm arrogant or I'm, you know, an idiot or I hate my customers or um, whatever it is. You, if you're watching this, you can go and find these threads on Reddit. And it's, I mean, I don't take it that personally, to, to be honest. I mean... I have to run a business, I have to make tough business decisions. And um, not everyone's gonna like that, but that's not how a business is. You know, We aren't actually able to keep everyone happy and that's certainly not our, our goal either. We, we can't do it. We don't have the resources to cater to everyone's needs. We have limited resources, we're, we're very lean, we're a small business and we have to be strategic. Um, and I believe we're, we're doing it right and I believe our customers are gonna be happy at the end of the day. So um, to summarize all this, my advice to consumers out there, this is not about our business or about the Raptor 2. This is about being an educated and informed consumer. If you're about to hand over your hard-earned cash, read the terms and conditions, ask a lot of questions from the vendor and, and see what is the product, where is it made, how is it made, are the parts available, have the parts been purchased yet, are they manufactured yet, do you have finance to, to ensure that you can deliver, you know, there's a lot of big questions that no one ever asks from vendors and I'm really making a stand here, I'm making a point because I'm sick of bad deals. I'm sick of seeing small businesses shut down because they overreached and basically couldn't deliver on their promise. Um, so yeah, as consumers, this message from me to you, um, be smart, be wise, um, do your research. Um, it's, it's basically called due diligence. You, you need to investigate every purchase you do. Um, and if a CEO like myself um, isn't willing to discuss things publicly and openly and put it all on the table, 
I would be concerned. Um, I'm not going to shy away from my beliefs about business or about how I'm going to protect my loyal paying customers. I'm never going to shy away from that. So um, maybe that's the wrong attitude. I don't know. But uh, that's about all I want to say here. Um, If anyone's been offended by my stance and my uh, tone, I apologize. Uh, I'm not here to offend people. All I'm here to do is build a business, build a solid team to support that business and the, the loyal paying customers that we have, and obviously build an amazing product, the most powerful direct drive electric skateboard. That's all I'm trying to do. So um, yeah, I'm gonna focus on that. If there's any questions, write it down below. Um, sorry for this video being not about electric skateboards, but I think it's an important topic and for our industry to grow and prosper, um, we all need to make intelligent decisions. So thanks for watching guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye.